Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. As we enter May, we're facing an extended period of social distancing along with the prospect of a gradual reopening of our society and businesses and a return to a new normal. Dr. Manaz Kolani, Director of Counseling and Ability Services, joins us with some advice for facing the next phase of the COVID crisis. Dr. Kolani, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We appreciate you being on here. And I imagine this is a troubling time for a lot of our students. Have you noticed um, an increase in business for your department with more students reaching out for assistance? And can you tell us maybe some of the nature of their concerns? Absolutely. Actually, um, we have seen a, a sharp increase in the demand for personal counseling. We briefly talked about the survey, the basic needs survey that we have posted on HCC Care's uh, webpage. And uh, one of the questions on that survey is inquiring um, source of distress for students during COVID-19. And of course, um, a large number of our students identified financial stress as a major sort of a factor in, in, uh, that is as problematic in their lives right now. And the second one was mental health related issues. Um, almost 30% of students who completed the survey um, indicated that they are struggling with depression and anxiety. And uh, um, they do mention that it's uh, directly related to the COVID-19. So we do see an increase in demand for mental health services. And, and it really is an opportunity for us to pay attention to the sense of wellness and the fact that mental health is, is uh, general health and it's a major part of um, sort of that culture of care and cultural wellness that we uh, so much cultivate at HCC. Um, so students talk about feeling um, a lot of anxiety related to um, different sort of uh, circumstances, whether it's their academic life, whether it's occupational, financial, their interpersonal relationships. So this anxiety seems to be over overwhelming for a lot of our students. And we're glad to be there to help the students. We do provide sort of brief, um, time-limited a solution focused counseling services that it happens in the context of here and now helping students to develop coping skills to to deal with the anxiety and the distress that are experiencing right now well, you know anxiety is something that really hits all of us but i imagine students are in a special position they didn't ask for us as none of us did um, we went away on spring break it was uncertain then everything started closing down mm -hmm. and now we're uh, five weeks since spring break has elapsed and it, it's it's a new world we're living in and a lot of students are facing maybe unemployment because maybe they've been laid off and then trying to bring money in are they getting stimulus money are they getting uh, money from the college how are they going to make it through and oh by the way you got your courses you're responsible for online those uh those situations seems like they can be unbearable for anyone, much less somebody who's trying to get to college. Absolutely. And it, a sort of a core component of anxiety is the fear, the fear of unknown. And um, sometimes anxiety, most often anxiety can be um, sort of something depending on the way we think or black and white all or nothing kind of thinking. But uh, in this case, um, a lot of it is fact-based. We know that um, people have, are experiencing a lot of anxiety because of those stressors that you mentioned. If you worry about your job, you're bound to feel anxious. This is not something that, you know, just let's say just in your head that you can kind of change. There's a lot of uncertainty and that uncertainty is definitely anxiety provoking and it's enough to make anybody feel like, um, you know, their whole life is in sort of like limbo and they don't know how to deal with it. Having said that, however, we know that there are some strategies that uh, we can use in order to reduce that anxiety. Um, first and foremost, obviously, we've tried to uh, put in measures in place to assist the students, to create, um, to bring some sort of relief into their lives in terms of their financial stresses, access to technology and all that, which I'm sure the other guests that you've done talked about those elements, but also 
just sort of um, providing personal counseling in terms of coming up with ways that allow a person to address the anxiety and get some relief from the anxiety. Because after all, anxiety is a treatable condition. Um, sometimes, you know, some levels of anxiety is, is adaptive, is useful. It helps us kind of motivate us. And then sometimes they really kind of lead to um, spinning our wheels and not knowing what to do. Um, but there are strategies that we help students with in terms of identifying ways of dealing with, with anxiety to reduce that anxiety and be able to get through the semester um, and, and sort of be able to finish successfully. Or some of our students, this was just not a good fit but before, and that is okay as well, recognizing that maybe I cannot take an online class and I have to kind of uh, pause and think about it for the next semester. So, um, you know, they're different for different ways for different students, but overall it's, it's getting to a place to know how this is available. We can reach out and, and seek support and, and help. You know, there's been talk right now of reopening uh, society again, reopening businesses. And uh, right now we're under a stay at home order, which is in effect mm -hmm. in Harris County, but the state has reopened in some parts. On when we do reopen, am I going to go back and function in society? Am I, what happens if I don't feel safe mm -hmm. to go to a campus or to go to my job? How do I deal with those things? What, do you, uh, what advice do you have for someone who's facing those prospects to keep them and their families safe? So you definitely are raising a very good point. Um, you know, people, we see that people are already feeling that, you know, that cabin fever and, and that feeling of being cooped up. And at the same time, it's the fear of, you know, what's going to happen. Again, the fear of unknown. I think we can take a look at it from sort of a group perspective as well as the individual perspective. When it comes to the group perspective, it really depends. We really focus on the way that the institution handled COVID-19 and responded to COVID-19, which was in a very thoughtful manner. And it was, uh, the responses were um, effective. They are um, in a timely manner. They were delivered in a timely manner to, uh, to reduce the risk of infection. And I think knowing that, knowing that that trust has already been established, that we are in good hands, um, can be helpful in terms of knowing that whenever that decision is going to be made, it's not going to be taken lightly, that the decision to go back would be made based on, you know, best medical advice and all the state and, and uh, city guidelines. Um, and that helps us in terms of, well, it's just not going to be something that is just taken haphazardly. So I think that's helpful. And also on an individual level, each one of us needs to to um, sort of take responsibility about our own personal health. Um, we realize that there could be a lot of students who never used ADA accommodations for their classrooms. Maybe they didn't need to. And, and we expect that we will have a wave of students who need those services um, if we go back and when we go back to campuses. Um, there could be conditions directly related to the COVID-19 or conditions that uh, are related to uh, health conditions that some of our students might have. Let's say, obviously, if you have, for instance, an autoimmune illness or some kind of health problems, then you may have some reservations at this point, and you are you may qualify to get protection under the ADA law. So we do encourage students um, to um, reach out, reach out to the counseling office if they have concerns about going back to the campus and explore their options. And obviously, I'm sure your experts from the talent engagement will also discuss that in terms of when the faculty and staff are ready to go back, some of the you know, measures in place for them to reach out for additional support and services that they may need. Um, so it's important to kind of look at it collectively and think about our options. And I think one thing that also can help each one of us, regardless of the role that we play, whether we are a student, faculty, or staff, it really is about listening with empathy and being having an open mind. What we have learned in the process of this pandemic, I think, is the fact that we really learn to expand our minds and think about the fact that there is always more than one way to do things. And I think once we create that safe environment for people to 
talk and share, that's where flexibility kind of comes into play. And we learn that, hey, maybe there are other ways of facing the same kind of outcome and it's not just one way of doing things. And I encourage people to keep an open mind, whether you are a student or a faculty or staff, and, 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 and when you engage with the other people, keep an open mind, share your concerns and, and stressors and allow the other person to also join you and then find a place that, again, flexibility can come into play. We're talking with Dr. Manaz Kolani, the Director of Counseling and Ability Services here for Houston Community College. Dr. Kolani, stick around. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hear how, where folks can go reach out to your services. We'll talk about that. We'll give a website, maybe a phone number. But I also want to talk about relationships because we're all stuck at home, maybe with a significant other, maybe with a partner, maybe with a, uh, a roommate or our family. Their relationships, we all want them, we all have them. What do we do with them now? Because we're all stuck in home. We'll talk about that when we return on the topic. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back after this. Meet Ekaterina. She has lofty goals to learn English and accounting. So she's studying for two degrees at Houston Community College, which means she's going all the way to the top. HCC, for everyone, anytime. I've seen people's lives change just by attending a class at HCC. Some of them might not have the financial means to go to a four-year university. That doesn't make them any less, quote unquote, smart than the kids who go to a four-year school. HCC is easy to get to. It's easy to apply and easy to become a part of. It gave me so much confidence. Once you finish your two years there, you can transition into a four-year university or go into the workforce. It's affordable. It's accessible. It changes lives. Meet Elizabeth. She's a mom on her way to get groceries. She's also on her way to getting an associate's degree at Houston Community College that could help provide for her family. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're talking about mental health. You know, we're all trapped at home right now, um, you know, uh, segmented from society, and we're spending a lot of time with our loved ones during this COVID crisis, and that could be a double-edged sword. Too much time around someone could be problems or could bring you together. How do you deal with those relationship crises? Well, we're talking with Dr. Manaz Kolani, and she's the Houston Community College Director of Counseling and Ability Services. Dr. Kolani, welcome back again. So we're all stuck at home with our wife, partner, friend, uh, with our family in many cases. In many cases, I've seen families where they brought family in from across the country so they could all be together during this time. But not everybody's going to get along. How do you deal with those relationship problems when you're seeing somebody all the time? That's a very good question. I think it's one of those things that we may not want to sort of uh, acknowledge to ourselves, but we all have been there. Um, and I think that the, the fact is to acknowledge that there is an issue. After all, uh, you know, privacy in our culture is very important and we all have boundaries. And, and in this case, um, uh, most likely even our physical boundaries have changed because as you said, you've got more people at home all the time. Um, so I think acknowledging that is, is a good thing, knowing that, hey, I do need my privacy sometimes and I need my alone time. I think that, that's a good place to start. Um, when it comes to romantic and intimate relationships, I think it's important to create a little bit of um, space and also with everybody else in the family. If you have, um, you know, the luxury of having um, two workspaces, that would be great. If not, it may require additional creativity to kind of think about carving out a workspace for yourself. And even for our students, if you can create a, a sort of a carve out a small space for yourself to work separately from the rest of your family, that can be helpful. Um, also, it's, it's really about checking in with each other and letting each other know that, um, you know, what are some of the issues that you're concerned about and what, what is on your mind? I think maybe before the start of the week, because everybody is busy and we still, particularly if you have kids at home, you may still have like a teledoc appointment, you still have homework with your kids. 
So it's important to kind of share beforehand and think about, well, this week we have all of these items that we need to take care of and these are, this is what our schedule looks like. So I think it's important to talk about them maybe beforehand a little bit. It's not necessarily like a you know, business meeting, but just kind of look ahead and, and see what the challenges are and how we can help each other. I think it's also important to use a lot of I feel or I statements and that help people in terms of not attacking each other's character instead of complaining that the room is always dirty it's, it's, it's more effective to just say it, it really makes me happy when the room is clean or when our shared space is clean I feel a lot less anxious for instance so um, those are some of the techniques that we can use also um, you know with intimate partners I think it's important to also carve out some time for date nights even though this is not a you know not time that we go outside but think about some of the activities that we may like to to um, to sort of engage with as a couple it could be visiting a museum online you could be reading a book together it could be finding you know attending an online concert um, some people are being creative I had one co-worker that I really like this idea in terms of having a mason jar and then having the ideas in terms of her date night and then putting that in that jar and picking one that works for, for the couple. It could be making an elaborate dinner together. So it really is whatever, whoever the relationship you are concerned with, whether it's an entire family or your partner, I think it's important to again recognize that this is a stressful situation and we all have to be patient with each other. I think it's important to check with each other and ask how was your day how did your day go is there anything particular that I can support you with what are some of the emotions that came up today and make yourself available to provide support and listen it's not necessarily about fixing things I think a lot of us get into that fixing mode immediately um, we may not be able to fix it but it's just really about being there for for the person or persons that we care about and letting them know that you know, we are interested in what's going on in their lives. We want to listen, and if there is any way that we can offer and provide support, it's important to do so. And ultimately, if we get engaged in a conversation that is stressful and it's not really being resolved, I think it's important to um, listen to our bodies. If you start having a conversation, an argument, and your heartbeat you know, get faster at that point, you're not really being productive in terms of being able to have a sound and, and, and intelligent conversation. And we really are in a sort of fight or flight mode. And maybe that's the time that we need to disengage and we need to end that conversation, give ourselves a little bit of space, um, get out of, you know, each other's visual and auditory field and, and kind of wait to come back to it when we are calmer. And it's, it's normal to also get engaged in some kind of, you know, um, sort of conversations that may not necessarily be productive, but it's important to recognize those conversations and recognize our own mood and knowing that, hey, this is the time that I need to kind of step back uh, and, and I can get back to it later. This is not something that necessarily needs to be resolved today. So Dr. Kolani, another thing that's kind of troubling right now is uh, we're seeing a rise in uh, domestic crimes that are happening. And a lot of people may be finding they're not in the right place, but we're in a time of quarantine. What do you suggest for relationships like that when you don't really see people face to face and you're in a situation that isn't good for you or the other person? That's a bit, and I'm so glad you asked this question. Um, we know that globally there has been, unfortunately, a spike in uh, incidents of domestic violence. Um, and um, it seems that often if you have a history of those, um, you know, incidents in your life, um, then they, they tend to sort of repeat themselves when there is so much stress going on. Um, one thing um, that we did with the counseling office, we reached out to um, the Harris County um, Domestic Violence Prevention Coordinating Board, and we asked them to do a presentation for us. Um, incidentally, April was the um, Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Prevention Month, so we did put 
also um, uh, a presentation on our website, on our counseling page for, for folks to get some information and get some resources. But we've had incidents of students calling us and letting us know that they need a safe place to go. Um, the shelters are still available. Um, so if the student needs, they, they do pro, um, practice social distancing. We uh, are available to help. So um, Houston Area Women's Center obviously is a fantastic, incredible resource in Houston. Um, but I would say if you are, if you are um, involved in an abusive relationship and if there is an incident that you need to seek safety, um, your first obviously point of, um, your first action should be in that time to reach out for help. Um, it, 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 you know, calling 911 or if you're on, um, available that you can contact a counselor. At, uh, obviously, that's one thing that you can do during business hours and contact a counselor in terms of getting information um, in, in terms of resources and community um, shelters and places that you can go to, to seek safety. So domestic violence does not stop because there is a pandemic. So all of that information in terms of the resources, domestic hotline, and other um, related resources and information are on our website. And I do encourage uh, you know, anybody who's exposed to domestic violence um, to check those resources and have the information available so they can reach out as soon as they need help. And you bring up a good point, just because we're, we're in quarantine doesn't mean you should be in an unsafe situation. And if you're in any danger, uh, get out of the quarantine and get to safety. Uh, reach out for help during these times. Uh, because a lot, of, a lot of people are in need of that. Dr. Kolani, thank you for being here. If, uh, you could real briefly tell us where our students can find you on the website. Is there a phone number they can call? Um, I am going to give you my direct phone number, which is 713-718-7449, but the best place to locate a counseling is just going to HCC website and look for counseling. So once you look for counseling services, you get um, multiple pages of information, including all the resources that we have, internal and external resources, as well as the names and contact information for the counselors um, across HCC. So um, I promise you, if you call those numbers, you will definitely find a counselor who can reach out to you and provide assistance that you need. And you can always email me and I will direct you to the um, counselor who can help you. Dr. Manaz Kalani, Director of Counseling and Ability Services here at Houston Community College. Thank you for all the work you do and thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're watching us on HCC TV, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and across social media. You can download all of our podcasts at hccs.edu slash podcasts. For the topic on HCC TV, I'm Todd DePlantis.